Hello friends, very good morning to all of you. So today we are going to discuss PF29 part 2 that is uh, authorization code uh, with PKCE flow. So in previous session we talked about the authorization code. Now we are going to talk the PKCE flow with auth code. So again the same thing we can do, we will just try to understand the workflow. The second thing we can, we can just register the client in the ping federate using PKCE. And the third thing we can just test using Postman. Okay, so yeah, let's begin. We are in PF29 part 2 that is authorization code grant with PKC flow. So let's quickly discuss the workflow diagram and then we can register the client and then go for the testing uh, with, yeah, using Postman. So in the workflow diagram, uh, it, it will just like as a auth code flow only. There are a few things we need to understand uh, in PKC and the flow will be same. So if you remember we have already discussed in the previous session about the public client and the confidential client if you remember that session. So public client is what we are talking like example as a native apps and a single page application okay, which uh, request access token and some additional security concerns are posed that are not mitigated by the authorization code flow alone. And what is the challenge there using auth, auth code flow in these two applications is that in native app like uh, the native basically the native applications cannot uh, native application what is native application I think you know right which basically runs on the user device like the mobile based applications okay so the uh, native apps basically cannot securely store a client secret because uh, while decompiling the application will reveal the client secret which is bound to the application and is same for all the user and devices may make use of a custom URL scheme to capture redirects potentially allowing malicious applications to receive an authorization code from your authorization server and if for single page application is cannot securely uh, store a client secret because their entire source is available to the browser so in these two situation auth code flow is not going to work so therefore like PKC enhanced authorization code flow introduces a secret created by calling application that can be verified by the authorization server and this secret is called the code verifier additionally the calling application creates a transform value of the code verifier called the code challenge and sends this value over HTTPS to retrieve an authorization code how we are doing in the authorization code flow this way a malicious attacker can only intercept the authorization code and they cannot exchange it for a token without the code verifier okay now let's quickly understand the workflow diagram and then we can jump to uh, ping filtered for registering the PKC client. So you can see here like the resource owner basically trying to again the same thing log into the application native or single page. Now what native or single page application is going to do here they will just uh, this software basically creates a cryptographically random code verifier. So first what it will do it will just create a cryptographically random code verifier kind of OPEC number and from this generates a code challenge so first it basically creates a crypto cryptographically random code verifier and from there only creating a code challenge using some algorithm used rssr256 you can take an example once this is done it again redirect uh, a request from user browser machine to the authorization server endpoint that we can say authorization server endpoint okay as you can see step number two now in this request what information will pass the same thing what we are doing in the authorization code apart from that there are two more parameters attached that is you can see code challenge and code challenge method so code challenge method will be like rssr256 and the code challenge will be kind of some opaque number this request will be submitted to the authorization endpoint of ping federate now what ping federate will do the same thing it's just uh, redirect a user to the login and authorization prompt and then give a consent page where user will just approve after that it will just store the code challenge that came in the request okay it will store the code challenge and then will generate a temporary authorization code and send back to the user browser to the native application or the single page application okay once this is part is done then again so this this part is like authorization call is completed now it will go for the token call using back channel communication the communication is same like in the auth code flow this com authorization communication happened with the front channel that is the browser is coming and the token call is happening it's a back channel communication it's a direct call no browser communication is happening there it's a direct call from the client application to the authorization server 
and in that what information it's sending it's sending the client id code verifier authorization code and the redirect uri so we are not using client secret anywhere in this communication okay so we have client id we have code verifier we have authorization code we have redirect uri and then we are submitting to this is a http http post call and we are submitting to the authorization server token endpoint client id code verifier authorization code redirect uri now the same thing like pingfed will just verify the author uh, pingfed authorization server will verifies the code challenge and the code verifier and then it will generate access token and send to uh, submit to the callback address of the application and then apply once application have the access token it can just use that to call the apis resource apis resource, resource server api using the back channel communication so the flow is like the same only but you have uh, basically in this ca uh, case you created a uh, code verifier using that uh, cryptographically you you first created a cryptographically random code verifier and from there you created a code challenge and then you are passing that in the authorization call and then in the token call you are passing the code verifier so the ping federate authorization server here basically verifies that uh, code challenge method code challenge sorry and code uh, code verifier and then generated access token correct so now you can if you have a question here that you can can't we use client secret also in the pkc flow yes you can use it's not like you can't but that's not a purpose of pkc if you are using that's not a problem you can just configure the client secret in the authorization server and then you can share that to the client application and they can pass along with these parameters like client id client secret and code verifier and the redirect uri and the authorization code temporary authorization code you can do that also it will work but there is no means of that right we are using pkc so no need to configure the client secret because you have a, the client is basically creating a cryptographically random code verifier and from there it's generating the code challenge and then sending that okay and this this uh, code verifier and the code challenge will keep changing right it's not uh, consistent it have some time duration so once you initiate a new request you will get a new value so this will all this this will basically keep changing okay it's not a fixed thing okay so that's all the flow of uh, pkc i think you ho i hope you understand this it is just a standard thing there is nothing like complex here okay and uh, let's quickly register the client and then let's test in the postman so let's go to the ping feeder console let's close this let's go to the ping feeder and then we can quickly test in the postman okay let's go to applications oauth and then you need to create a new client click on add client choose auth code flow with pkc proof key for code exchange copy it no need to use client secret here okay so leave it make client authentication as a none leave these options okay no required redirect uri we can add the postman address i think we copied somewhere let me bring it from there yeah add it and here you have an option to for the pkc flow so bypass authorization approval okay and allowed grant type will be authorization grant you can choose authorization code you can choose here and then you will get an option of pkc enabling the pkc okay so you can see require proof key for code exchange so you can enable this so first you need to enable the grant as a authorization code and then you need to enable this pkc require proof key for code exchange option okay and def define the token manager as a test atm we have and we'll leave other options as it is no need to go for the open id connecting because we are not uh, connect, using currently the open id connect part okay this looks fine you can save this or go to next you need to define the risk level value so we have html form open dj so that uh, it can pick that uh, adapter and authenticate the user i think you you have now the idea of all those extend property how it works and how you can configure and define your policies just save it 
okay we have saved this connection and it's replicated also automatically okay this looks fine now let's quickly have a test copy the client id okay because that is required in the postman and leave these options as it is okay let's go to postman in postman what we need to do clear the cookies and you have the pkc already so you can just uh, go to pkc option you have this auth chat uh, code with authorization code with pkc open this no browser option i have already downloaded the postman collection so yeah we have there okay again i need to make a change for there okay let's do one thing we can test in the same only okay not a not a problem so i'll open this because i need to again add the addresses and all okay so yeah but you can define the environment okay you need to just create a here no you can see there is no environment so you need to first create environment and you can define the client id secret callback address and you can use the same everywhere okay so let's test this like auth code test uh, pkc i'll mention here the token name grant type choose as authorization code with pkc callback address is fine authorization url token url should be fine change the client id give the client id new and you can see they have the client secret option but yeah it's not required so i will remove this but you can use that or if you are configuring everywhere both the places but it's not required okay then you have the code challenge method as i told uh, you can choose the algorithm so we have the sort of 56 code verifier like uh, it will be automatically generated by postman okay scope blank make it blank client authentication sensor basic authentication header yeah it looks fine okay i don't see any problem for now let's hit get new access token and copy the username password again give the username password in the postman and click on sign on go back to the postman and yeah it's good so you you can see you have now you get the access token we can definitely decode it and we can check that it looks to be fine or not okay so we have copied the access token and you have the token type expires in access token URI real client ID uh, client type authorization code with pkc client authentication and all okay this looks good let me close this and let's go back to the jwt.io and let's decode it okay so you have those options like yeah header value payload value and we yeah, have we have the same informations and verify signature yeah it looks good so this is done uh, let's jump now to the next that is implicit grant if you have anything any question please put in the comment section yeah we can discuss again thank you